Welcome back. The topic for the day is target costing. Employs a whole lot of techniques so that its profits are really high. Now, one of the techniques is target costing. Now, what exactly is target costing? Let's understand the concepts of target costing through a story about two friends. Now, trad represents the traditional approach and mod represents the modern approach. So let's first see how trad does his business. Now, the method adopted by trad is the cost plus pricing. Now, the estimated cost of Trad's product is $50 and he wants a markup of 10%. So what is the profit that he wants to get? It's 50 multiplied by 10% or $5. So he adds the markup to the estimated cost and he fixes the selling price at $55. That is 50 plus 5 gives $55. Now, the problem is when Trad went to the market to sell his product at $55, he found that his competitor is selling the product at just $44. So what happens? All the customers went to the competitor's product and nobody bought Trad's product. So immediately, Trad tries to reduce the cost of the product. Okay. But the problem is 80% of the product cost is committed during the design stage. Only 20% of the cost can be reduced once the production starts. So Trad is finding it very difficult to reduce the cost. Now, if we were to generalize the calculation, if the Trad's product is priced at $100, then the markup is 10% of 100, which means that the markup will be $10 and the selling price will be 100 plus 10 or $110. So this is a generalized relationship between the cost, the markup and the selling price. That is, if the product is sold at $100. Now we will go to the mods approach of doing business. Now mod employs the method called target costing. So let's see the definition of target costing. Target costing is a reverse costing technique. Reverse, that is he's going to work in reverse. What did we see in the case of Trad? He was working from the cost price, adding the markup and then arriving at the selling price. But now what Mod is going to do is he will start with the selling price and work backwards. So that's known as the reverse costing technique. So where a target cost is set, by reducing the desired profit markup from a competitive market price. So let's see how it is done. So in this case, we have the selling price and the markup at the rate of 10%. And we have something called the target cost. So the relationship that existed for Trad, I have copied it here. That is for cost of 100, we want to earn a markup of 10% or it's 10% 10 of 100, that's $10, giving an amount of 110 as the selling price. Now, in the case of target costing, I said it is a reverse costing technique. So first we have to start with the selling price. And what was the competitor's price? The competitor's price is $44. So even we are going to sell our product at $44. And we want a markup of 10%. Now, markup is something that you calculate on cost price. So how do we calculate the markup on selling price? Now, selling price is equal to 110%, which means that if we have to calculate the markup, the markup is $44 divided by 110 multiplied by 10. So I'm going to write that. So it amounts to $4. Now we have to arrive at the target cost. Target cost is selling price minus markup. So selling price is at $44 and markup is at $4. So the target cost is 44 minus 4 or $40. The next step is to arrive at the estimated cost. So we will take the very same figure that Trad took. So our estimated cost is $50. 
but what is the target cost the target cost is 40 dollar so we have a gap there and it is known as the target cost gap the target cost gap is 50 minus 40 or 10 dollar target costing exercise is done at the design stage of the product so it is very easy to reduce the cost. So MOD tries to reduce the target cost gap. Now, if MOD is unable to reduce the target cost gap, then he will discard that idea. He will not even bother to produce that product. But if he can reduce the target cost gap, then he will go ahead with the idea. So he's always planning in advance, considering the market situation. Now we will see what are the various methods in which we can reduce the target cost gap. Now for reducing the target cost gap, we can never increase the selling price. Why? Because the selling price is fixed by the market. If we increase the selling price, the customers will immediately go to our competitor's product. So there is no question of increasing the selling price. And we cannot reduce the markup also. Why? Because our shareholders will be unhappy. So there is no question of increasing the selling price or reducing the markup. Now, what are the other options that are available to reduce the target cost gap? So the methods of closing the target cost gap are value engineering or value analysis. It aims to reduce cost by removing the non-value added features. What do you mean by the non-value added features? Now, value itself means there is a value which is associated to the use of the particular product, okay? Suppose if you have a watch, what is the use? You should know the time accurately and the watch should not be spoiled after a few days or a few months. And we also give value to the esteem. What do you mean by esteem? Esteem is the pride that is associated with owning the watch. Suppose you have a Rolex watch, there is a pride associated with it. Now, when you go to buy a Rolex watch and you see that the boxes in which the Rolex is sold is very cheap, then it will definitely affect the esteem value. You will think I'm paying so much for the Rolex watch and are these the boxes that they are being packed in? So it affects the esteem value. Now, apart from these, there are certain non-value added features. Suppose if in the Rolex watch box, they are printing their slogans also. That is unwanted expenditure. Nobody will attach value to the slogan which is printed in the watch boxes. So any features which just adds to the cost, but it does not add to the value should be completely eliminated. We have to verify each component of the product. We have to see whether it adds value either by way of use or esteem. If it doesn't, then immediately remove that component or that feature. That is known as value engineering or value analysis. And that is one of the primary methods of reducing the target cost gap. Now, the next method is the team approach. Team approach brainstorming. What do you mean by brainstorming? Like a group discussion by bringing together the design, the assembly, the distribution, and the marketing team. Now, all these people can contribute greatly towards the design of the product. If all the ideas are pooled together, we will get ways and means of reducing the cost. Now, the third method is reducing the direct material cost. We could always look out for alternative suppliers who will provide the raw materials required for making the product at to reduced cost, but without affecting the quality and use of standard components. What do you mean by standard components? Standard components are those components which are already available in the market. Now, if you are going for a customized component, that is a component exclusively made for your company, then it will be much more expensive. So if possible, go for standard components because it will reduce the cost of the product. And the next method is reducing the direct labor cost either by de-skilling or by mechanization. What do you mean by de-skilling? De-skilling means substituting the skilled labor with semi-skilled or unskilled labor. How is that possible? By introducing technology. Now, if you're assembling a particular product, you don't need the top class engineers to do the assembling work. If it is a machine which is doing the work, only a semi-skilled laborer 
can just operate the machine. The machine itself will assemble according to specification. So that is the meaning of descaling and mechanization. Mechanization is using more of machines and less of labor. So, which means that the direct labor costs will be drastically reduced and through mechanization, we can always go in for a large scale production. And another method is reducing the overhead cost by adopting the activity based costing approach. Now, this is something that we have already studied. Activity based costing segregates the overheads based on cost pools and it identifies the cost driver. So it becomes very easy to identify what is causing the overheads. So if you reduce a number of cost drivers and automatically the cost can be drastically reduced and by improving the productivity. Once the productivity of the laborers are improved, that is if one person can produce more number of products, then the overheads gets distributed between a larger number of units, which means that the cost per unit will come down. Now let's get to see the advantages of target costing. So the first advantage is external focus. Now we know that we are always having a market driven selling price. The selling price is not fixed by the company, but it is fixed by the market. So it is easier to withstand the competition and it reduces the marketing time as things are right the first time. Advantages of target costing can be derived from the steps that we adopted for reducing the cost gap. We will just take a look of what were the points. We have the value engineering or the value analysis, which means that one of the advantage is includes only value added activities. And another advantage is early cost control. Because target costing is employed during the design stage. So we can control the cost at an early stage. We know that it is when the design is fixed that 80% of the cost of the product gets committed at that time. Because of the cost control that happens at the design stage, it is easier to control the cost at that point of time. The next three advantages could also be linked. If you notice here, the methods of closing the target cost gap were three. Reducing the direct material cost, reducing the direct labor cost, reducing the overhead cost. So all these three are the benefits of target costing as well. So we shall add those points in the advantages. So helps in reducing direct material cost, helps in reducing the direct labor cost, helps in reducing the overhead cost. So I'm not explaining this further because that has already been explained in the previous slide. Now, before we wind up, I would like to bring to your attention one of the most common mistakes that students do in the examination. So let's take a look. The difference between the margin and the markup. Now, we know that the selling price is $44 and we have calculated the markup at $4, that is 44 divided by 110 into 10. And we get the target cost at selling price minus markup. That's 44 minus 4. That is how we calculated the target cost. Now, suppose... If in the question, it is not markup that is given, it is margin which is given. Margin is not something that you calculate on cost price. It's only the markup that's calculated on cost price. Margin is always calculated on selling price. So if in the question, it's not markup which is given, but they are giving margin at the rate of 10%, then the calculations are completely altered. So margin at the rate of 10%, you always calculate at the selling price. So it becomes 44 into 10%, that is $4.4. That is, we are calculating it on selling price. And what is the target cost? Target cost is $44 minus $4.4, or it is $39.6. So always put this fact in your mind. Is it the markup percentage that they have given in the question? or is it the margin percentage that they have given in the question? So as a summary, we could say that target costing is a reverse costing technique where the competitive selling price is first found out and the markup is reduced to get the target cost. And the company calculates the estimated cost. And when they calculate the estimated cost, it is not only the manufacturing cost that they take into consideration, they consider the life cycle cost. What do you mean by life cycle cost? 
life cycle costs are costs that is incurred for the product through its entire life cycles now for life cycle costing i will have a separate session for that but just understand that whenever they estimate cost it is a life cycle cost that they take into consideration so this is one of the techniques that toyota has employed to be ranked as number 1 in the most profitable automobile companies now the other methods that toyota has employed to improve its profits are the just in time the tqm all these will be dealt in subsequent sessions so that's it for today we will be taking up mcqs in the coming session if you would like to receive notifications for the same i request you to click on the subscribe button and also the bell icon so that you will receive alerts whenever new uploads are done so thank you all and see you in the next video